My name is David Dinner. I work in the Lung Center at Ephraim McDowell Hospital, uh, brand new to the area, just started in February of 2022. My name is Lindsay Knitter. I'm a physician assistant. Um, I'm fairly new to the area. I moved here in February from Northern Michigan. I work at Ephraim McDowell Health Lung Center. So unfortunately, Kentucky is number one when it comes to deaths associated to lung cancer. So that's where this uh, lung cancer screening really comes in, uh, is extremely important. The other aspect that unfortunately Kentucky leads the country in is the cases of advanced lung cancer. Uh, once lung cancer is spread beyond a small isolated area, the chances that that individual will ultimately survive the lung cancer start to drop pretty dramatically. So really the only way of, of significantly improving population health is early detection. The people who are in charge of making these determinations figured out that we're actually missing a fair number of individuals who are good candidates for screenings. Uh, smoking history, it's defined as pack years, 20 pack years, which would mean how many years the individual smoked multiplied by how many packs per day. So if somebody smoked for 20 years at one pack per day, that would be 20 pack years. The screen itself, it is a lower dose, so less radiation than a regular CT scan. The, the program itself, it's an initial CT scan and then uh, follow-ups after that. And what determines what the follow-up is, is if there are any abnormalities identified. And what's not commonly understood is that it's fairly common for individuals particularly over the age of 50 who smoke, to have abnormalities um, show up on, on CT images. Between about 30 and 40 percent of individuals who have that initial scan for, for lung cancer screening will have an abnormality. Uh, the good news about these abnormalities is that the vast majority of them, 95 to 98 percent, are not cancer. So lung cancer is one of those cancers that doesn't really present many symptoms early on. So by the time somebody has symptoms of lung cancer, oftentimes it is it's at an advanced stage, it's spread beyond the lungs, uh, treatment uh, is very difficult at that stage, and um, unfortunately prognosis is pretty poor. About 15 years ago, we started to see the first studies come out about specialized CT scans. And what was exciting about those scans is it was the first time that they actually showed a reduction in your likelihood of dying from lung cancer. The ability to identify lung cancer at early stages allows us to treat it and potentially cure it much, much sooner. The New Lung Center is an integrated center where we have um, five providers for our pulmonary, two physicians and two um, mid-level providers, and a thoracic surgeon. So we take on referrals for a broad spectrum of different uh, lung issues from COPD to abnormal CTs to following um, low-dose lung cancer screening and pulmonary nodules. Uh, the nice benefit of having uh, Dr. Holly, the thoracic surgeon with us, is being able to incorporate um, you know, any questions that we might have with an abnormal lesion, whether or not it's something that you know, could you know, potentially need surgery, uh, and vice versa, uh, where Dr. Holly can come to us as the you know, pulmonary group to say, hey, you know, I'm gonna be doing surgery on this patient. Uh, what can we do to help optimize lung function and get them through the surgery? Uh, there's already a wonderful base of primary care providers that are out there. They're the ones that are doing the legwork, identifying the patients who can benefit from screening, encouraging those individuals to get screened, 
and we're here to help make their jobs better and to help patients through what is a very, very difficult process.